I am head of the uh, representative of the World Bank for Latin America and the Caribbean. We are celebrating today the uh, Women's International Day, and we are here to talk about very important issues for uh, women in our region, uh, participation in the labor market, the pandemic, their involvement in uh, leading economic areas like science and technology, entrepreneurship, and also leadership. And uh, we have the uh, luck of talking about leadership of having it together a uh, star guest. Uh, she is uh, Rebecca Grinsman, who is now Secretary General of the United Nations Conference on uh, Trade and Development, UNCTAD, and who has uh, had a uh, very an outstanding leadership path in her own country, Costa Rica. She's Costa Rican and who has uh, filled very important positions in our region and uh, beyond in various areas. We are extremely uh, pleased to have you with us, uh, Rebecca. Thank you very much, uh, Felipe. I'm very uh, pleased um, to uh, be here with you and to uh, join you in this uh, World Bank event on a very uh, significant and meaningful day, as is March 8th. Exactly right. I, we are also very happy to have you here with us. And before we um, address the topic at hand, I think uh, that we have to uh, recognize that we are all very concerned with what's happening in uh, Europe and Ukraine. And I guess that in your role as a uh, that's a secretary general, and uh, for all those who are interested in the world peace, are uh, concerned. Of course, this has an impact on women. Yes, absolutely. We are very concerned with the uh, humanitarian uh, developments. When there is a conflict, women and uh, children suffer a lot. Uh, there is the risk of an exodus and a refugee crisis, like uh, we are seeing right now. The risks for women are enormous. Fortunately, we have uh, gradually learned to uh, manage them better, to provide a uh, support, but we will be uh, needing a lot of uh, assistance and help to uh, rise to the challenges that this uh, conflict is creating and uh, placing uh, so many uh, families in this kind of uh, going through so much uh, suffering. Uh, this uh, makes us uh, very sad and we are very, made very sad by the images uh, that we can see in the media. Totally agree with you, Rebecca, but let's uh, talk about uh, the uh, subject that brought us here today. And um, we are now uh, gradually um, moving out of this uh, very difficult conditions that were created by the pandemic. And I was uh, wondering what is your perception of the impact, the differential impact of uh, these uh, very uh, special circumstances. We are all aware that uh, this has been uh, horrendous in terms of the uh, impact, the adverse impacts on our health issues that uh, became a crisis that went far beyond uh, uh, health issues because there were uh, economic and social impacts that had a huge impact on Latin America and the Caribbean particularly in the first uh, year, first uh, one and a half years, impacts on the economic uh, uh, employment and uh, school attendance. Uh, and uh, I was uh, wondering, what is your perception about the impact of the pandemic and in particular on women? I think that the pandemic has uh, brought uh, to the light the vulnerabilities that we already knew that existed because matter of fact is that uh, losing in uh, 10 months of the uh, pandemic, that's the first year to lose uh, 20 years of social progress across the year and many of the gains in uh, women's rights also speaks uh, volumes about the vulnerability of this uh, progress that was not very resilient, so to speak. And uh, uh, either we are measuring something uh, incorrectly or uh, we are uh, using the wrong indicators uh, that uh, hide the uh, vulnerabilities and the fragility that were buried, so to speak. And indeed, uh, women uh, not only lost more than men, lost more jobs, because there are many reasons for that. They're like, for instance, the kind of a women's insertion in the labor market. Uh, women in the first place participate uh, principally in those uh, sectors that were mostly affected by the pandemic, services, uh, tourism, uh, uh, care activities, uh, 
uh, where women participate a lot, at least in the formal market. So uh, obviously, because of those uh, industries were mostly uh, negatively impacted by the pandemic, women lost more jobs in particular. But there are other reasons as well that have to do with their uh, insertion in the labor market. Uh, we uh, know that uh, when uh, there is a crisis, employers tend to think that women need their jobs less than men. And when they have to decide who to keep and who to uh, uh, fire, dismiss women suffer uh, a lot more than in regards to employment and also the informal sector where women are overrepresented. They are overrepresented in the small businesses and micro businesses, micro enterprises. And of course, this was a sector that was extremely uh, badly hit by the pandemic and it's a sector where there is no uh, protection uh, safety net uh, that uh, women can uh, fall back on in case of a crisis. So uh, in terms of the figures, if I recollect uh, correctly, about 56% uh, of Latin American women lost their jobs at some point in time during the pandemic. And I think this is a World Bank data if I'm Correct. And this is uh, appalling. I can't uh, think of another word of this appalling impact. I and mean, of course, other rights as well, gender, uh, gender violence and the increase in uh, violence during a lockdown so it was a huge uh, concern because it is a, an impact uh, that we did not expect. Uh, this is uh, posed a huge uh, challenges in addition, how to reach those women uh, during the uh, lockdowns. And so I have to say that many of the uh, platforms have uh, women's offices, bureaus, uh, government agencies that already had uh, gendered violence uh, programs uh, quickly, moved quickly to use uh, digital technologies, uh, symbols or forms that would allow women to communicate so that they could be uh, given the uh, assistance and support they needed, but uh, this uh, scourge of a violence is uh, unfortunately so present in our societies at the World Bank, uh, since the beginning of the uh, pandemic, we uh, ran uh, several surveys in uh, quite a, uh, an important number of Latin American countries and that uh, revealed the increase in gendered violence that is uh, shown in these surveys in a very specific and very concerning manner. And now in average in Latin America, women are still below men in uh, getting their jobs back and get their, their incomes back. And figure that we have uh, gleaned is that women's uh, employment is uh, still about 16% below. It's a pre-pandemic uh, levels, whereas uh, women have, uh, men are about only 7% below. They are moving faster in uh, getting their jobs back. And uh, this is a matter of uh, concern. And I think uh, that we need to put in place specialized, uh, focused programs that uh, deal with this issue uh, regarding uh, women. We were just uh, talking before we went live about uh, the new role position of the UNCTAD uh, uh, regarding uh, trade issues because uh, to get uh, women to better join uh, the yeah, economy, uh, they need to have a greater participation in uh, cutting edge technology actors. I think that when it comes to trade, the world is becoming smaller. It is becoming easier to engage in trade and there are more opportunities beyond our national borders. So I was wondering, it'd be great if you could tell us what our UNCTAD's initiative in this respect. Uh, thanks very much, Felipe, for that question. I'm going to uh, blend these two topics that you have uh, mentioned because one of the issues uh, for uh, women's um, going back to work it has uh, to do with uh, the uh, balance uh, between uh, work and uh, family. And part of the uh, huge problem that women are facing is that this uh, care uh, society has been uh, terribly weakened by the pandemic. There are many uh, women who cannot go back to work 
even more so, take the care that uh, the schools have been uh, closed for such a long time and sometimes even uh, permanently. So their return to the work uh, labor market has uh, taken much, much uh, longer because the services they need to get back to the work uh, labor market were not there uh, to help them. Uh, so it's a... Uh, it's ironic. It's par. It's a paradox that uh, we were we were we were telling them stay home to prevent infections became became a sentence uh, against the women because they had to stay uh, home because they they were not able to go back to the labor market because the services were not there because uh, schools remained closed and they never thought how this would impact. Uh, what would be the impact on recovery from the viewpoint of women and gender issues? So we thought from the beginning that uh, women should be uh, sitting at the decision-making uh, desk. And I'm here talking uh, very uh, candidly because it was not just a matter of having a uh, gender, um, a gender uh, perspective and policies, but that women should be involved in uh, designing those policies. And uh, in regards to, and I'm saying all this because uh, when you uh, asked me about the uh, trade issues, although it's true that we need this uh, cur issues and this is uh, labor and uh, family uh, uh, balance, it is also true that uh, we need women to be able to uh, uh, get better jobs or to have a better insertion in the economy. And this has to do more with the uh, production metrics, with the production side. And I think uh, this is critical. It is uh, critical for all these considerations to be part of the uh, women's agenda, not just the care issues and the rights issue, um, but also where we're going to be uh, inserting in the uh, women are going to be inserting in the economy. And trade plays a very important issue. And I think that the women face two critical issues in the first place. What? I, uh, financial, financial issues is so precarious. And uh, when they uh, come up with a uh, startup, a project to a bank, even uh, uh, to the most innovative institution, it is a lot more difficult for me to get a uh, financing for their project or idea. And that uh, when it comes uh, to a woman's uh, project and to uh, get into trade, you need a funding. And the other um, very important issue that has uh, involved in the more general uh, trade issues is uh, trade facilitation. When the uh, paperwork is so cumbersome when there's customs issues, when there's uh, cross-border uh, trade issues arise where many, many women are involved, but they're basically informal uh, merchants. So the faster, uh, cheaper, easier uh, becoming involved in trade will allow women to uh, uh, a, a insert themselves in the better quality conditions in international trade, world trade. It's very important. It is so great to have you there. I don't that perhaps we can uh, work together to facilitate uh, trade and women's uh, insertion uh, in the economy. And uh, a related issue that I'm concerned about is that the figures for uh, women's, uh, young women's uh, uh, education, uh, training in uh, science, engineering, uh, technical, and mathematics, STEM. Uh, only 35% of um, women that are uh, registered in uh, STEM careers are women. And in Latin America, I think uh, this is even uh, worse. In Chile, which is one of the most advanced uh, um, countries across the region and with the highest uh, income levels, only 12% of uh, uh, women are, uh, only 12% of uh, STEM graduates are women. And uh, so I, I, I wonder how we're gonna do this. There are some countries that are doing pretty well, like Costa Rica, your own country, uh, uh, when it comes to uh, researchers, for instance, I think uh, there is almost a, a level of a parity, equality, uh, gender equality. But how can we do this, Rebecca, so that women will uh, get more involved in these uh, areas and that are so productive when we uh, look uh, at the future? I'm uh, going to share with you a uh, story uh, because I think it is very illustrative. I think that uh, girls until the age of uh, adolescence, until they are they get uh, 
grades and performance in mathematics and science exactly like uh, boys but the difference start when uh, uh, the uh, the role model the role uh, game starts uh, when uh, when it becomes uh, so more difficult to if uh, you are studying math and you are uh, in the more feminine uh, role that's been uh, fixed by society uh, i think it is very important to talk to girls and uh, teenage girls i i'm a strong believer that when they uh, see women that are in all roles that are engineers and scientists and women of all types that are alone that are raising a family that are that are have a partners that the degrees of freedom that are available for them to choose are there and they have to be used we have not internalized the discrimination or differentiation because that is the uh, truth of the matter we internalize these uh, this discrimination and uh, there was a very interesting in at stanford university that my daughter told me about uh, she was taking uh, social psychology uh, classes and uh, she uh, told me about this exercise in which there were two groups before the mass examination the teacher their professor said i just read this morning an article that that very interesting one that it talked about men's and women's uh, uh, mass uh, capabilities and it said that uh, their uh, capacities were exactly the same and in the other group nothing was mentioned and the uh, women in that group uh, did a lot better uh, with a significant statistical difference. And I think it uh, speaks volumes about the importance of uh, discrimination, the subtle discrimination in uh, study materials where women are not shown as engineers or astronauts. And uh, this uh, whole issue about uh, the parents' attitudes as well, because uh, uh, this is something that also requires work at home. Uh, parents have to open those opportunities for women and for girls to uh, join the fields of uh, science uh, science, uh, and to give her information about the uh, great opportunities in the labor market when you come from those fields. Uh, there is a very nice program that's called Inspiring Girls. Inspiring Girls run by uh, women from uh, various uh, areas of knowledge and uh, the labor market, uh, successful uh, women who talk to uh, girls that they have uh, these uh, different role models that break away from the uh, established patterns. I think that we have to increase the uh, degrees of freedom for personal choice. I think that's what it's all about. And I will not like to leave uh, here the impression that uh, somebody who studies uh, education uh, however, is less valuable than a scientific or the doc, a woman doctor uh, is uh, less valuable than a woman engineer. Uh, I do not want to uh, simplify things, but uh, what I think it is important is that the uh, figures uh, show, and this, uh, there, it is, uh, it is not a matter of a probability that uh, women uh, choose some professions uh, than others. And I think that is happening is that uh, the increase of freedom to uh, choose those quote unquote, masculine uh, manly careers are more close to women than the men because of uh, the roles in the educational system and the uh, social incentives to promote certain types of behavior. I totally agree, totally agree. You know, for instance, you've, uh, brought in my mind this uh, area that is still kind of uh, incipient in our economies that is so important that's uh, digital technologies and uh, the information technologies there are three four countries that have been able to uh, create these uh, software companies that uh, overnight are valued at uh, hundreds and sometimes uh, thousands of million dollars and in Latin America, there is an increasing participation in these markets. And I think it is an important and interesting development. Uh, when, if we go uh, reflect on this issue, I have uh, held a meeting, a couple of meetings with these groups of uh, um, youth and 90% uh, of the uh, people that participate in uh, these uh, groups in uh, Uruguay, Argentina, Mexico are men. And uh, why? And I have asked them, why this does not have to be so. 
the, and nobody can give me a good answer, but there is this story about values and attitudes that I think are sometimes uh, conscious, sometimes they are unconscious because uh, they feel that uh, programming and ideas like a obvious club uh, for boys. Uh, so we have to do something to uh, break those, uh, get out of those uh, attitudes. And uh, I think that it's a good idea to, you know, like foster this counter examples to show um, men and women and men that there is no particular advantage or disadvantage belonging to one sex or the other. Totally agree. And I think that this has to be uh, done particularly with the new cohorts because a part of the problem is that we have a uh, stock of uh, people in my generation with roles were particularly marked and where everything was like, everything was difficult. Every step that you made, every step that you uh, took. I think that today on the Women's Day, perhaps we should have started by saying that, or I should have said personally that I feel uh, safe and secure that if I have uh, filled, if I'm filling the roles that I'm filling right now, it's because there were many women that fought be before me, uh, but there is this a collective uh, fight side. So I want to say that, I want to say that loud, out loud, but also we have to uh, say that we have to work with a new cohorts and with uh, young women. For instance, when it comes to digital issues, we're, uh, since you, we are doing a lot about e-trade, digital trade with women, and we're bringing women to speak their voice in international uh, discussions and debates because they have a very a good and beneficial uh, experience. We don't have to talk in their stead, but rather open the events, the conferences, the platforms where they can uh, uh, share their own experiences. And as you will uh, said, we have to break, trash those uh, Teams, uh, I perhaps this is one of the uh, spaces, social spaces, where I think much progress has uh, been made, and I think that progress has to be uh, publicized. Uh, I, I had more opportunities than my mother and my daughter has more opportunities than many women in my generation, and we have to say this for one reason, because you can only change reality if you are persuaded that you can per change it. You will not move forward if you feel that nothing is possible. I think that uh, because uh, many uh, women and men have come together who believe in a better society and a more equitable society, we have seen and we still see more opportunities opening up for uh, young women and even a greater desire to uh, break those uh, molds. We have to help, we have to push that discussion forward. I have also heard in this uh, very special uh, times that we have uh, been living to, I've heard some uh, women say that uh, curiously, uh, remote uh, work and working from home has uh, helped them a lot. Uh, not everybody, but uh, uh, many uh, have told us that their husbands, their spouses had to stay with them. So there's been sort of a democratization of uh, child care and uh, men have uh, been more involved, increasingly involved. Women uh, have uh, been able to uh, enjoy more uh, flexible uh, times that has opened uh, certain opportunities. So this was a more uh, an accident than a plan, but I hope that this will uh, change attitudes and open more doors. Technology is changing the work we uh, work. I am certain that we are going to go back to our offices five days a week, but uh, that's, uh, however, the kind of flexibility that uh, women need to become more involved and be more represented in the labor force. I, I think that's a very important issue. And I totally agree with you that uh, flexibility is as uh, 
work flexibility, uh, schedule flexibility, flex time is uh, an issue that uh, women have put on the table in the agenda. This is a, a topic, an issue that uh, we discussed with uh, union leaders because uh, they were very, like, very masculine, manly demands in terms of uh, working conditions and, and that we told them that, that uh, we talked about the importance of involving women uh, more without flexibility, meaning more precarious uh, working conditions. Many women join the uh, formal work because this is more flexible than a formal market. So the idea is, the challenge is how to accomplish that in formal labor markets. But it is also true that uh, uh, the playground is not a level. We need a flexibility in every uh, stance. I have opened at UNCTAD the possibility for like when everybody had to stay home, many women decided to go to the office because they did not have the right conditions at home because not everybody has the physical conditions to be able to uh, stay home and work from home. When you have uh, children around because and uh, when uh, there are uh, women who have a uh, an involved uh, spouse or partner, but that is not uh, always the case. So if we're talking about flexibility, and this is the uh, big issue that uh, you have brought to our debate, perhaps this is something that we have been able to um, um, become more involved in uh, during the pandemic. Uh, this was an accidental uh, event and not a uh, planned event. Uh, but uh, it, flexibility makes a sense. I mean, some women will prefer to uh, go to their office because they feel more comfortable. Others will uh, prefer uh, more flexibility to strike a different kind of a balance because they live under different circumstances. So what uh, we uh, have to think of is in individualized things so that systems adapt to a particular individual conceptions. This uh, regulated standard work conditions for everybody has uh, is uh, something that perhaps uh, is uh, gone through some sort of crisis at this point in time. I hope that this will uh, uh, shed some light on what's the uh, future, uh, the, the road as we move uh, forward and that technologies will allow to uh, move from informal jobs that provide a uh, great flexibility to formal jobs that are just as flexible. I unfortunately, uh, time flies on the 30 minutes that we had been uh, given for our conversation have uh, expired, but it was uh, great to have uh, Rebecca Greenspan as a special guest. It was really an honor to have the opportunity of uh, talking to you and also to have you as a world leader representing Latin America in, an initi in a global initiative. And I would like to uh, close this chat uh, by uh, thanking everybody for uh, having uh, joined us on this uh, International Women's Day. And from the uh, World Bank, I think we are very clear that it's going to be very hard for for our countries to meet their development goals if we do not fully involve uh, women in our economies and give them the uh, flexibility that we have just been uh, talking about with Rebecca today. And of course, we remain available to all countries to continue in this uh, important struggle as we move uh, forward. Thanks, uh, Rebecca. Thanks very much, uh, Carlos Felipe, for your important work and also to bring this issue as a critical central court uh, development issues. This is not uh, marginal and it uh, involves us all. Thank you, Rebecca, and thanks everybody. Gracias, solamente quiero